Dr. V here with my service dog, Hestia. Today we're making a video about how I score the Psychiatric Service Dog Partners Public Access Test. You can find that test on psych.dog, that's P-S-Y-C-H dot D-O-G. But this is not an official PSDP video. This is my own personal interpretation of how to score the public access test. The point of a public access test is to determine if a service dog is going to be safe in public and also if they adhere to community standards. And I think it's really important to notice that along the way, if someone's disability interferes with their ability to do a test item, that the test should be modified. So for example, during stairs, if someone can't do stairs, use a ramp. So there are some things on this test that are scored throughout the whole test, and I'll go over those briefly. The first one is item number one, training aids, and that's no treats, corrections, or training gear. Item number two is tension on the leash. Generally, you want to see a J in the leash. You want a, a loose leash. In my opinion, it's okay if the dog gets out of position a few times, so long as the dog is able to be effectively uh, refocused and returned to uh, the position, their working position. Number three is inappropriate conduct. There's nothing like barking, biting, peeing, pooping, growling, none of that. Number four is if the dog is comfortable and confident in their working position. And working position can vary from team to team depending on what the person's disability related needs are. So uh, for example, for small dogs like Hestia, a lot of times I carry her, some of her default working position is in my arms or in a pouch. However, even if it's a small dog, uh, the test should be performed with them on the ground. Uh, except for the restaurant portion where they are allowed to be on your lap while you are seated. Number nine is distractions in the normal environment. Um, and that's just the reaction of the dog to things like carts, other people, displays. Um, it's fine for a dog to get distracted or even startle a little bit. The important thing is that they recover quickly and return focus to their handler. And number 14 um, is working around other dogs. That's not going to be demonstrated in this video. Normally, I evaluate that during the whole test because I have my service dog with me while I'm giving the test. Um, uh, um, alternatively, if you have more than one service dog teams taking the test, that's a good way to evaluate it. Otherwise, you'll need to get some outside dog in and again, mild interest or looking at the other dog is okay so long as the dog is able to easily be refocused on their handler. Something that I think is important that is that if you are testing a dog and they don't do an item absolutely perfectly or maybe it's on the borderline, like they've done a behavior like maybe walking down the food aisle and um, there's a little too much leash tension for your liking. Um, for me, I think it's okay to let them repeat the item. What I do is I tell them what went wrong. I say, you know, when you did that test item, there was just a little bit too much leash tension. And then I encourage them to take a break, refocus with their dog, and then return and attempt the item again. Now, if it's a serious violation, like growling during the friendly stranger portion of the test, that I don't allow them to retake. That's a serious violation and, and should not be retested. All right, so um, we're going to start out with entry into the building. Um, and so uh, here we go. Hold on. Good girl. Estia, heal up. Very nice. Ready? Let's go. Good girl. Left. Good girl. Over here. Good girl. She did that just fine. The next test item is number eight, navigating a store. There are two uh, test items um, here that are uh, scored throughout the whole store. The first one is no interaction with no interaction with merchandise, and the second is no interaction with other people unless she's been cued to do so. So now we're going to do shopping carts which are right where you are. <laughs> That's yeah. Come on, this way. Over here. Come on. That's yeah. 
Thank you. With me. Leave it. Good girl. Left. 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 Good girl. Leave it. Good girl. I'm going to put this cart back now. Katya. Good. Oops. Good girl. All right. Now we're going to move to the back of the store and do leaving food items. Let's go. Katya. Leave it. Good girl. Very nice. Good girl. Leave it. Very good. Good girl. This way. Katya. Good girl. All right, the last part of navigating a store is uh, food items. And if you're not in a grocery store, we're in a TJ Maxx. Um, they usually do have one food aisle. So I'm going to go up and down the food aisle. Ready? Let's go. Leave it. Good girl. This way. Leave it. Good girl. All right, we're gonna go into test item number 10, which is obedience. And the first part is a 30 second stay. Um, this is not an obedience competition. A sit down or stand is fine. And if they adjust a little bit, you know, go from a sit to a down or something, in my opinion, that's totally fine. The idea is you want them to stay generally in place, like while you're looking at an a item in the store. So um, I will count it out. Hatya. Stay. Good girl. Okay. So that was the 30 seconds today. The next one is a come command, and that's done from a distance of six feet. Stay. Come. Good girl. And the last thing on the obedience section is an attention command, leave it, good girl. That can be a watch, a look, a focus, even just calling the dog's name and having them return their attention to you. Um, I like to wait until the dog is not looking at the person and then have them give the focus command, but Hestia is trained to look at me pretty much all the time, so that might take a while. So I'll just demonstrate um, how I do it, which is saying her name, Hestia. Yes, good girl. She actually looked away, so you got to see it. All right, the next test item is um, height is uh, leaving a food item. Um, and this is in the case of uh, this test, that is going to be a treat. So Brad is going to go down that aisle there and hide a treat. And then I am going to uh, go down the aisle and um, Hestia will ignore the treat. Ready? Good girl. This way. Come on. Oh, you're going to sneeze? Come on. Leave it. Good girl. Sit. You want to show where the food item is? Leave it. Good girl. Next, we're going to do friendly stranger. Actually, I have a question. Would you mind helping me out with this um, test that I'm doing for my service dog? I'm going to cue her to say hello to you and you can interact with her um, and just we are looking for no aggression leave it I know you know it's coming no aggression or anything like that so okay go visit now you can say hi to her go visit good girl good girl thank you very much I really appreciate it all right now we're going to do parking lot behavior and then entering a vehicle Girl, Hestia, oops, Hestia, good girl, that's much better, leave it, good girl, oops, wait, Hestia, wait, hold on, 
All right, let's go. Get in the car. Come on. Now, normally during a public access test, I like to drive around the parking lot really quickly, but we're not going to videotape that. See you at Panera. So now we're in a restaurant and um, I'm going to walk around a little bit and the dog shouldn't try to sniff or eat anything on the tables or floors. Hestia, you ready? Come on. Hestia, let's go. Come on. Good girl. This way. Come on. Good girl. And now we sit at a table. So the test scores the position of the dog. For large dogs, that's usually on the floor underneath the table or right next to the table. Small dogs can be on their handler's lap as long as they're not sniffing food, interacting with stuff on the table and so on. Um, and the dog should never be fed or watered from the table. Normally during a public access test, I like to have the person being tested eat a little something just to show how their dog is able to ignore the food, but we're not going to videotape that right now. See you at the hotel. Now we're going to do test item 15, restrooms. Um, we're not going to actually go in there and show you, but basically you just want the dog not to be peeking under the stalls or trying to leave the stall or anything like that. I don't make people actually go to the bathroom. They can just stand in the stall for about 30 seconds. Now we're going to do test item 13, stairs. Hestia, come on. Good girl. Very nice. This way. Oh, you're caught. All right, come on. Now it's time for test item number 12, elevators. Wait. Oops, this way. Come on. So they can be sit down or stand, it doesn't really matter, just so long as they're comfortable and confident in the elevator. This way. So that concludes my scoring of the public access test. This is just how I score the public access test. I hope you find this helpful. I like to write a personalized note on the back of the test, summarizing some of the pros and cons during the test. Um, I think it helps with record keeping, and also it gives a chance for improvement of the team in the future. But remember, a public access test is just a snapshot in time. Things evolve and change. Thanks for watching. Filmed at TJ Maxx, Panera, and the Hilton Garden Inn, all in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Created by Veronica and Brad Morris. Copyright 2019.